Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at here on this Sunday. End of the weekend is upon us. Just about the end of the weekend. We still have the rest of Sunday here. April 13, 2025, 11, a.m. California time. Man, got a lot of earthquake activity ramping up here since last night. A bunch of movement uh, all across the uh, various areas here of the planet, including some movement right now, it looks like, there into the Izu Trench with a 4.0 coming in 150 miles deep there now that's associated uh, with a subduction zone that sits right here called the izu trench obviously i know what that's doing that's applying further strain here across that subduction zone to the uh, northwest called the nankai trough you guys have been hearing me talk about that a lot i think that's where we're going to see our next eight pointer we'll get to the rest of the world activity here in a minute starting off here at the uh, west coast area washington region Kind of a decent swarm of earthquakes going on up there. Uh, start, started off here yesterday with a 3.1 uh, north of, I believe that's Omac. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Just off Highway, Highway 97 here to the west. Uh, got about uh, nine earthquakes or so. Uh, various magnitudes. The largest is going to be a 3.2 that struck early this morning about four o'clock local time here so there's some interesting activity i went ahead and pulled up the uh historical model here of uh, earthquake activity let me bring back this um, terrain map so you guys can see kind of where we're at in the same location right where the earthquake swarming is occurring but maybe a little bit more north up here either way uh this area i pulled up 4.5 and above shows uh looks like some movement throughout the years here with uh, at least a 4.5 up to a 4.6 that struck out here in 2011. Uh, a little bit further south, away from the area, a larger quake that struck back in 1872, 6.8. Goodness, that was a big one. Just to the southwest here a little bit, uh, around the Lake Chelan area. That uh, definitely a little concerning there, but obviously uh, his, history tells us that we can see earthquake activity out here. It's just not all that common uh, but we'll keep an eye on that as uh, could be leading to something maybe a little bit larger in the area that's up there in northern washington one earthquake out around the three sisters area 1.7 earthquake uh, a lot of chat about uh, well over the years here finding a bulge out here in the southwestern area of the three sisters region they feel that's obviously due to some magma underneath the area. I went up here about two years ago to uh, see if I could find some information about it. Of course, all the roads were closed. A lot of snow up there at the time, so I may have to get back up there. Uh, not a whole lot of GPS instruments in regards to monitoring the, uh, the uplift around this area, but it's definitely uh, an area to watch here. 1.7, just one earthquake there from uh, early this morning. Looks like that's about five to uh, 5.8 miles deep underneath that region. Uh, Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes, including one outside of Weaverville, 2.7. That was yesterday. Bay Area, a couple smaller quakes today, including one right there on the San Francisco or the uh, San Andreas Fault outside the San Francisco Zoo. That's the uh, San Andreas Fault here, the plate boundary for a little one pointer. Nothing big uh, for now. Uh, Southern California lighting up here a little bit. Got a little sequence of events here. One down south, one up north, and then one here to the west. It's following that triangle shape here. And it's kind of outlines the same area uh, as what we're seeing here on the map. The topography of the map shows this plate boundary. South here, the San Andreas Fault, and then the Garlock Fault shear zone. So it's been doing that here for a little while. As far as earthquakes happening up north. Uh, and then kind of in a triangle fashion here. And that's not good for the San Andreas Fault. Obviously, we got some concern here where that, uh, you know, maybe uh, getting ready to go. A couple earthquakes here around the Santa Monica area from yesterday. Um, today around the San Andreas Fault, uh, a little bit more. Brushing up against it here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, the latest there around the swarming area, around the little... Uh, San Bernardino mountain range outside of 29 Palms it looks like a couple smaller earthquakes this area here uh, a number of earthquakes in the last week got about 12 earthquakes in that region 
little separate swarm of uh, 19 earthquakes here. It's just been a trend of various swarms across this triangle region here. You can pretty much, it's right about here. It starts right around here. And then we can see the strain up across the mountain ranges there north of Tehachapi. That, uh, you know, kind of creates a little triangle there. And it's been doing that for a little while. Uh, obviously putting the strain right there on the San Andreas Fault. Got to watch that pretty closely there. Because, uh, you know, it's got a lot of strain built up. Over 300 years, the southern branch here uh, has not had a full rupture there since uh, this would be before 1700. A little bit of further movement down south here. It looks like off the Imperial Fault, 2.3 from this morning as well. So things are still on the move out there across California. Uh, Yellowstone, nothing showing up there, but I just want to double check, see what we have. Uh, let's go over here to Yellowstone. We'll get to that weather here at the end of this update video. Uh, some wind events from yesterday there in the dark blue lines. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, well, not a whole lot. I mean, if we have to look at some of these lines here to see if there's anything in there, it might be one or two, but those are very small, extremely small, probably around a 0.5 or 0.7. That's below the one magnitude range. Uh, the rest of the country, some movement outside the uh, oil fields there around the Permian Basin of Texas. New Madrid, the New Madrid seismic zone, a little 2.2 this morning. But uh, that's common to see an earthquake here or there on any other day, or every other day, I should say. Got uh, about 20 earthquakes here in the last month. That's actually a lower number compared to average. Um, so all that rainfall that's been dumping on this area in the last couple weeks, no effect as far as earthquake activity goes. All right, the rest of the globe here, man, we got, like I say, there's a lot of activity ramping up here uh, in a big fashion, spread out all over the place. A lot of older movement here from yesterday along the uh, uh, South Sandwich Trench, but noticeable new activity around the Chile area. And just offshore there around the Antarctica and the Nazca plate boundary. That's going to be this earthquake right here. Normally, when things uh, kick up from that area, we got uh, uh, we got to watch the Prue-Chile Trench. It normally puts a strain out there along that region of the subduction zone. Uh, Middle America Trench got some typical activity. Mixed bag of earthquakes from yesterday and today in the 4. Looks like the 3 and 4 range. Uh, but the more noticeable picture, I would say, is the increasing movement here across the Kuro Kamchatka, leading down here to the Nankai Trough around Japan. Look at that super deep earthquake, almost a six-pointer, into the Kuro Kamchatka Trench uh, early this morning. It looks like 2 o'clock this morning here for a 5.9 earthquake, 237 miles deep. That's a super deep one into that subduction zone, very lengthy subduction zone. Been chatting about this for for a little while, right? If you guys watch my videos, you'll see that I've been seen to watch this subduction zone and also around the Nankai Trough. Well, there's a number of subduction zones out here that are, uh, well, they haven't had any large earthquake activity in quite some time, and uh, it should be coming here soon. The Kuro Kamchatka Trench is just one of those. Not really too concerned with the Japan Trench. That's where that nine-pointer struck 2011, but... Uh, Definitely this area up here, and then the Nankai Trough down here. Uh, especially with that newer movement right now, that 150 mile deep four pointer, adding the strain out here against this region. Uh, further down south, a couple smaller, well, moderate earthquakes in the five and four range, it looks like. Uh, nothing major going on there across New Zealand. Looks like some activity further up north along the Kermadec Trench. So with this fashion going on, this little trend of earthquakes across the area, I'm sure New Zealand will fill in. Uh, here it looks like some older activity from yesterday, a three-pointer, but uh, watch that. Looks like it's starting to work its way down south here across the plate boundary. A uh, bunch more earthquake activity up in um, Tajikistan, right? Or Tajikistan. That's up here. 5.8, 4.7 early this morning. Uh, looks like there's a number of aftershocks there in that area. Uh, not showing up on the USGS map in the four range. Quite a bit there in that area. Uh, also over here around Turkey, little swarm going on. 
Looks like there's a swarm going on just around the outside the Turkey region here. Not really showing up on the USGS map, so that would be extreme eastern Turkey, maybe. Maybe getting into Iran. Uh, got a little bit of activity stirring up there. That's going to be this stack of earthquakes there in the 2, 3, and even a 4-pointer range. Uh, there's that newer earthquake there in Turkey, 4.4. Well, these guys showing a 4.7, but the uh, USGS has that as a 4.4 earthquake. Uh, nothing major going on across the Greece area for now. Um, let's see, what do we got? 2.5 there across the Italy area. Let me take a look at that real quick, see where that's at. Almost looks like it's in the uh, Campe for the Greyfields. Uh, let's go up here. Really not seeing anything of any major magnitudes around the Campe for the gray fields here. The volcanic activity looks like it's just dying off. Uh, that earthquake may be a little bit more up north as far as the one that the USGS is reporting. Uh, as far as the Santorini area goes, still seeing some movement down here. Got 144 earthquakes in the last week. Um, no increase that I can see across the area. Over the last, uh, oh man, the last couple months, they've had a number of earthquakes here. Probably, I'm guessing, up around 18,000 earthquakes or so uh, because the numbers were quite impressive during the daily counts for a little while. But that has since died down. Not completely, though. We're still seeing earthquake activity with, um, you know, quite a few each day. This looks like a uh, 3.8 earthquake from a couple days ago, but mostly smaller microquake activity occurring out there right now. All right, uh, what else we have up here? Let's check out the Earthquake 3D Globe. Atlantic Ocean calming down for now, aside from the areas down south. We'll keep an eye on a couple of these mentioned areas around Japan, the Kuro Kamchatka. Just, uh, man, some decent uptick here in the last 24 hours. Very noticeable there on the globe and the map. Uh, space weather activity. There was a filament eruption sent towards the Earth today from a uh, filament that was located here. Center disk. Let's see if it's... Uh, Kevin has it right here. So here's the uh, filament eruption and the plasma that got shot off there. It is Earth-directed. Kind of looks almost like a... A decent shot, earth directed from this region right here. A lot of times these are hard to spot until they really blast off. But uh, it does have an potentially an earth directed component, a lot to the south, west, and east, but you never know. Sometimes it shoots off like that. Uh, but we'll have to watch here in the coming days, see if the aurora forecast does not change. It's going to take, uh, oh, a 48 hours to 72 hours here before the arrival of that plasma cloud. That could enhance the auroras here um, probably after tomorrow night or so. We'll keep an eye on that, see if they don't adjust that accordingly once they get the um, a little bit more information on it. As far as flaring goes, uh, looks like we're still consistently flaring with C and M flare activity. Look at that. Sizzling like crazy. Uh, no X flare activity. That's coming off of a sunspot, which is pretty much just off the western limb right now. Uh, that's going to be this area right here, just consistently flaring. I wouldn't doubt if it pops off an X flare once it gets out of sight, out of mind. But uh, that's just about to that stage there. Barely visible. Uh, by tonight, that should be uh, much further out. So I'm really not too concerned with this area anymore. It's not facing Earth. Anything that does pop off from here will be uh, directed away from the Earth. And we're left with uh, a couple sunspots here. Let's take a look and see what we have for any uh, complex sunspots here, magnetically complex. Uh, man, I'm just, I'm really not all that uh, concerned with any of these that are facing the Earth. This one over here, obviously, look at those deep dark colors. Multi core, that's a uh, very complex sunspot. Not so concerned with these two here, so I really don't expect anything Earth-directed. There is a couple sunspots on the far side of the sun that, uh, oh, this is from yesterday still, that will get a better view 
of here in, in about a day or so. There's this massive sunspot that will be peeking around the eastern limb here. This is one day old, so it should be much closer uh, to just about, you know, maybe being observable here on the uh, earth-facing side of the magnetogram, which begins right here at the eastern limb, western limb over here. This is that active region throwing off M flares and C flares, which is much further to the western limb here now. So this is just a flat scale model. So we have this large one to look forward to here in the coming days and maybe another one center disk, a large coverage area, but it's hard to tell if it's going to be, you know, magnetically complex that will produce those uh, flaring. So we'll watch that. See uh, once we get a little bit better uh, visual of it. Nothing major going on for severe weather today. Just some thunderstorm activity around the Great Lakes. <clears throat> That's about it. We do have potentially here a change in the weather patterns as we head into week two and week three. Favorable severe weather showing up there across Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas area um, for week two. Week three as we end April and begin May. That's looking um, like your traditional tornado alley setup. Watch for that. That could be some big time tornado activity if things play out. Um, you know, it's they've been consistent here. So as each week goes by and they stay consistent, that's a, a pretty solid sign here that we could be looking at a major pattern change for severe weather across Texas and the uh, Southern Plains states there. Uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's about it, folks. Just going to enjoy the day. It's supposed to be about 85 degrees today here. <clears throat> Not bad. May go out and do some yard work, get a little sun, enjoy the uh, warm weather before it really gets hot. Monday, yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be about 90 degrees here in Northern California. It's getting up there, but that's, uh, that's a nice cool day in the summertime for us. Seriously, <laughs> it's, it's brutal here in Northern California. <coughs> All right. I think that's my cue. I don't know if I swallowed a bug or something just went down my, th my throat. So <clears throat> have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Uh, unless something major happens. Like I say, keep an eye on uh, the West Coast. A lot of activity out there. And uh, just around the plates in general. I mean, that's quite a bit of movement here in the last 24 hours. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.